the pancreas, the parathyroid glands, which are located on the back, on the posterior side of the thyroid gland, and then the ovaries and the testes. And do you remember them being referred to as the gonads? Okay, because our list for the names of the hormones, <coughs> you're gonna find that some are termed gonadotropins, meaning they're going to go affect the gonads, either the ovaries or the tissue um, or the testes. When we think about this system, like I said, even though we're now in the endocrine system, we cannot forget the nervous system because I just showed how <clears throat> there is the connection to our brain, okay? But there are a couple of differences. For the nervous system, if we think about the nervous system, look at the endocrine system. Nervous system carried out activities to the internal portions of the body. Endocrine system, endo, once again means to the internal <coughs> areas of the body. So both are going to be communicating interiorly. They are definitely going to complement each other. One's going to be affecting the other and, and so forth. So they're definitely complementing each other. Both of them communicate chemically. <coughs> Think about neurotransmitters. Hormones are going to be chemical messengers. They can have the same effects on the same organ. Each one is going to regulate the other. We're going to depend on that nervous system portion, the diencephalon, to control that pituitary, which is pretty much I mean, you'll find out why they refer to it as the master gland. And then we're going to depend on that controlling what happens with that diencephalon area. What we're going to see, we're going to find that there is a connection between the diencephalon and that pituitary gland on the posterior portion and it is simply nerve cells. So I'm going to have on that posterior portion nothing but nerve cells. <coughs> Neuro is telling me that it's nerve. Endocrine because it's going to the posterior portion. So this is going to be termed neuroendocrine cells. Because on the posterior portion of the pituitary gland, only two hormones are formed. Oxytocin an antidiuretic hormone. That's it. All the remaining hormones come from the anterior portion. The biggest difference between the endocrine and the nervous system is how quickly they work. A nerve cell, a neuron. Let's go back to thinking about skeletal muscle. For skeletal muscle, we have that nerve cell 
make a direct connection. That direct connection to that skeletal muscle cell had an area called the neuromuscular junction. Does everybody remember that? Do you happen to remember the chemical, the product that got released into it to make the muscle contract? Acetylcholine. Was that reaction quick? In other words, does it take a long time for muscle to contract? No. The effects of a neuron to either another neuron, a gland, or muscle is quick. But now my endocrine system the product that has to be made has to be released into the bloodstream, which is going to have to travel the body to make it to its target organ to actually start the processes on that cell with the receptor. Do you think the effects are going to be as quick? No. no. Adrenaline, yeah. But then, what about how long the effect might be? <coughs> Is it going to be a short amount of time for the effect? Or do you think it's going to be a longer amount of time? Longer. Longer. Not only does it take longer to get to the target cell, the effects of it last much longer. <clears throat> that make sense? The receptors that are going to be on cells are going to be very specific. For example, when the pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone, should that go to all cells of the body? No. Where should it go? The thyroid. Only to the thyroid gland. Thyroid stimulating hormone is different from thyroid hormone. Do, do you see how? Okay. So, when these hormones get released from either our di the, the hypothalamus, okay, or from the pituitary gland, they remain inactive until they reach their target cells. That is the hope, okay? But we wouldn't have an entire area of medical study, of endocrinology, if things didn't go wrong a lot with this system. And trust me, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with this system. For example, know anybody who might have a thyroid problem? A lot of y'all shaking your head, yeah. That's a very common problem with this system. Know anyone who might have a tumor on their pituitary gland? Now think about that for a second. It's about the size of a kidney bean located in the cell of Tursica. And somebody having cancer there. Have I known that? 
Anybody might have that? It's not pretty. Think about what cancer does to the rest of your body. Think about it being on an organ <coughs> responsible for the hormones that are going to affect all these other glands of your body. That's kind of, oof, yeah, that's bad. And it's not like you can go in and remove the pituitary gland. If you do, <coughs> I don't even know what would happen, to tell you the truth. I really don't. I, I don't even know if that would be possible. I, I don't even know. I mean, I know it's possible to go in and for them to try to remove the tumor on the pituitary gland. But because of where it's located, they actually have to go through at this angle. So they go through all of this material to your, through your um, mandible. They go through all of the roof of your mouth up behind your sinuses to get to it. From what I understand, it's bad. So that, that's kind of interesting. I just thought about that. Mainly because I know some people who have tumors on their pituitary gland. So, this connection that we're going to see between that hypothalamus, which is regulating the primitive functions of the body, and all of that getting affected, all right, or having an effect on what the pituitary gland does. So, this pituitary gland. Man, I'm sure you keep mentioning that, okay? Another name for this is the hypothesis. And not like a hypothesis that you would do when carrying out an experiment. Note hypothesis, okay? It basically suspends or hangs from that hypothalamus by what I was trying to point out earlier. This is termed my infundibulum. The structure of that infundibulum alone is pretty cool. So, like I was saying earlier, we're going to have what they say is an anterior portion and a posterior portion of this pituitary gland. The anterior is our adenohypothesis and it's cellular in structure. My posterior which is the neuro hypothesis is nerve tissue. Therefore being neuro hypothesis. When you look at that structure, the anterior portion is the larger portion because the posterior side only has two hormones. Anterior is responsible for seven. We're going to find that in this infundibulum hanging to the pituitary gland the portion of that infundibulum going to the anterior portion, it makes contact between the hypothalamus and the anterior portion by way of a hypophyseal portal system. Have you ever heard of a portal system in our bodies? 